Hello and welcome back to Everybody Loves Raiken, our 5th edition live play that meets on Tuesday nights. Last time, a few weeks back at this point, the group had had a long rest, finally. Uh, I went through, I found the date as I promised I would. Uh, it is the 22nd of June now, putting the group officially in summer. Um... It is still uh, the morning. The party had just recently gotten up. So, prior to that, uh, they had uh, quite the exciting day of dealing with devils, getting back their friend Rowan, rosebudding people. Uh, gotta check my notes and see when when did they get back Bruinor. Oh yeah, that was also the same day. So they got back Bruinor! <laughs> um... They uh, invaded uh, Tatsuya's privacy, got the magic quill, started learning about his old correspondence. Uh, there was an attempt to make a lot of poison. Unfortunately, because of all of the stuff going on with the devil, uh, it didn't go as well as hoped. But I feel like that's not even really a problem since just milk Laramendus again uh, and try again. Um, but it did all culminate in this, uh, this deal, uh, with an Orthon, uh, from the Plain of Nessus, one of the Nine Hells of Beator, through which the party got back their friend Rowan, released him from his soul-binding deal, and, uh, he is now more or less free to do as he pleases, uh, and he seems to be, uh, weighing um, a lot of things. Uh, I know, uh, remember uh, that Derek had uh, mentioned specifically one of the thoughts on his mind was that he was intrigued by the fact that he was being treated better now since he'd attempted to kill the party than he had been back when he was supposed to be their friend, which I thought was an interesting observation as well. Um... In the middle of the night, uh, Leah still getting used to her trancing and her new schedule from trancing, uh, went about the uh, um, the world over in to see what kind of secrets she could snoop up, and she did find something interesting happening. Uh, she she went to Tatsuya's room, uh, which still has the hole in the wall from the. Uh, the trap inside, disintegrating it, uh, and found coffers, um, uh, Rialan Thess, uh, captain of the army, um, taking notes, writing something down, um, and in her estimation, uh, seemed to be hiding something. Uh, she, you know, closed off the conversation with him as quickly as she could, trying not to rouse his suspicion, um, and... Uh, went to report this to Laramendus, uh, and uh, they discussed some methods of verifying uh, whether or not there was, in fact, something to be worried about. Um, and uh, a couple hours later, when the rest of the party uh, rose from their normal sleep, uh, immediately, uh, or nearly so, uh, Vendar was summoned uh, by a very nervous soldier, um, supposedly a, uh, a human man by the name of Hollis Evren, uh, who um, asked him to follow him out of the world over in uh, and make sure to bring his bag, referring, to, of course, to the Bag of Holding, uh, which, as the party and Vendar knows, is not his. Not originally, anyway. So, being very concerned that someone has pieced together uh, that Tatsuya's disappearance uh, may have had more to do with them than they originally let on, uh, he very carefully followed this man outside, uh, whereupon a, a half-orc uh, appeared uh, from the shadows around back and uh, threw his arm around Vendar, dismissing the human in a puff of smoke and sulfur, and said, let's talk. And so, we will pick it up there. Uh, sorry for the long intro, but uh, 
as you are spirited away, quite literally, Vendar, to a demiplane. You believe it to be so, as you've spent more than a little time on demiplanes recently, and this is a very small, enclosed room with no doors or windows, and it has a very different feel about it than where you just were. It feels claustrophobic, and the air heavy, the place uh, filled with the rank smell of, of sulfur and uh, magma fumes. And uh, as you take in your surroundings very quickly, the, the half-orc is going to pat your shoulder and step away, spread his arms wide with his back to you, and he's going to grow massively, these large bat wings spreading out and shaking loose behind him. As he groans, he goes, Oh, that's better. The disguise you acquired me to wear is so confining. Vendor. Now then, about our deal. Yeah, I didn't expect to see you so soon. <laughs> I make a point of keeping my assets guessing. What I require of you as a Per the terms of our agreement, I can take whatever you have created as I please, and you were so kind as to inform me of the many sticks of dynamite you'd finished the other day. And, uh, how many is it you have? In total. I, f I forget real quick while he's dealing with that. Mm. The stipula like, our stipulation was we don't remember the deal, so this... this I forgot if Vendar remembered everything. Vendar remembers Vendor. everything. So, for out of character. Vendar remembers everything. The rest of the party remembers nothing other than that you... We got Rowan back. You got we Rowan back. And one of the st and one of the stipulations of that, or the only stipulation of that, was that you would not remember it, and that you agreed to that, and it was the only thing you agreed to. So that was the part we remembered. I, so I that's what you remember is that there was an agreement made. The agreement was be that you had memories of the agreement taken from you, but that you agreed to it willingly, and that uh, you got Rowan for it. That's all you know. Alright, I was yeah. just going to say for myself. Thank yeah, you. So that we wouldn't, like, freak out about missing memories. Right. Yes, yep. The It was very clear that the devil was trying to make it so that you could have what you wanted, but he could remain anonymous, and there wouldn't be any risk for to him from you telling somebody else. So, he asked how many you have. I have 16. 16. Such a busy little asset you are. Well then, per the terms of our deal, I am going to request that you give me 10. And I will remind you that I could take all of them, but I am a generous soul. Yes, at least leave me some. I think there's quite a lot of damage you can still do with six. And much more that I need to do away from you. So, your payment. Okay, I'll take out ten sticks and hand it to him. He's going to have placed this large hand palm up close to you, and you lay them in them, and you see his long, taloned fingers close slowly over them, delicately, you know, almost reverently, as the arm pulls back toward his massive body. He just says, Thank you. And before you go thinking that I'm such a bad guy, and the the sticks of dynamite are going to evaporate out of his hand, disappearing as he wiggles his long fingers. 
and he sweeps it through the air, and you see this pretty nasty-looking canvas sack appears in his hand. It looks to be heavy. Whatever it's got in it, you know, it, it, it lumpy, uh, roundish, um, and it, it sags, and you can hear the, the the fibers of the material creaking against his claws as the as the weight settles in it. it says, "Here is some hellbound material that I think you might find interesting." I would like to see what you do with it. And he's going to place it on the ground in front of you. Ah, oh, that's interesting. I'll pick up the bag. Uh, it's very heavy, probably 20, 25 pounds. Um, so, you you know, you heft it. Not comfortable to pick up, but as you let it sit on the ground again, you're able to pull the top open, and you're immediately hit with a reasonably acrid smell. It's, it's, it doesn't smell good, but what's inside just appears to be a black mass. Um, and, and poking your hand in, you find that it's solid chunks, almost like rock. Uh, and it, it's only a moment before you go, well, hold on, this looks like coal, just charcoal. What exactly is this? Well, there's an infernal word for it, but the uh, mortal souls that pass through and see its use have always told me to call it small. Braids a lot of smoke when you burn it, but no heat. Interesting. Yes, I hear that there isn't anything like it on your plane. So I'm thinking, I don't know what you'll make with it, but I'm sure you will find a use. I can come up with something. Excellent. You see, we'll start small, but let me assure you, Vendor. Our relationship will bear such fruit. I want to see what you do with that. And after that, I'll give you something else nice to play with, shall I? Alright. Perfect. Well, hopefully this solves the wound of losing the other, but let me assure you that your work is appreciated by me as I think no other could, and I'm going to make a lot of friends in hell very soon, and so I think I'll be able to give you quite a lot to experiment with. And then you can make a lot of friends on the mortal planes. That sounds nice. I was hoping you would see it that way. Well then, I'm satisfied with how things are going thus far, and as long as you remain satisfied on your end, then I think we should always have such pleasant exchanges. That being the conclusion, back to your war, little asset. And the area around you is going to kind of burn a brilliant red and then dim away as though you're being pulled backwards through a wormhole away, away from this place. The last thing you see is the, uh, the, the devil, uh, you know, filling what's left of your pinhole view giving a little wave and holding up one of the sticks of dynamite. You I'm will sure be sure that won't have any lasting repercussion. <laughs> How could it possibly? You're going to find yourself returned to Storm Refile. It doesn't appear like much if any time has passed. No more certainly than what you spent there in the demiplane. 
and the half-work, of course, is gone, it having been just a guise of the devil, and he did not return with you. Okay, uh, I'll put the big old heavy bag in my bag of holding. <laughs> yeah, it takes a little bit of finagling to squeeze it through the small uh, lip of your, uh, the small mouth of the bag, but you get it in there, it's, it's... It's certainly a test of your low strength as a, as a rogue, but you manage to do it after some, some work. And then it's like you don't have it at all. As for the rest of you, um, you know that uh, Vendar told you uh, last over the bond, um, hey, I know I said to follow me, but actually false alarm. You don't need to follow me anymore. Everything's under control. And then he was quiet for three, four, five minutes. But you get the hey. buzz of his thoughts on the uh, on the open channel uh, when he returns. But not before. So, like, there, there's some, like, level of we can tell somebody being on the bond, and that got cut. Is what you're saying for that time, and then now it's back, or now he, he it, it seems more like he was more guarded, and now he's less guarded, or not guarded, focused, perhaps. You believe that he was off of the bond. You know that he can come and go at will, so oh, yeah. it's possible that he simply disconnected it, disconnected from the bond after he said, "Actually, it's fine. Don't worry about me." Mm -hmm. And now he's back. Okay. And five minutes, while not unconcerning, is certainly a uh, much uh, more uh, reasonable amount of time than one could disappear for. Isn't that right, Cyrus? Indeed correct. So, uh, Riken was being asked away with his bag of holding. It's still morning, everyone's just getting around still, correct? Um... Yeah, you know, you've probably had half an hour or so, 45 minutes since, you know, waking up, however uh, slow people choose to be in doing that. Alright, so I guess my character will be in the dining hall getting breakfast because I just got my armor on. Alright, I was just wondering where I was. That's fine, I'm actually curious. When you say dining hall, do you mean the dining hall of the mansion or the dining hall of the inn? Uh the yeah, end. Uh, oh wait, yeah, I could eat. No, I, I, I would need to eat with the with the army, so I would have exited the manor, okay, and gone down into the end. Okay, uh, you're here, so I'll put you downstairs. And if you want to put yourself at a particular table, you may do that. Um, well, no, anywhere. It's just a. Oh, it would be an open table where no one's at at the moment. All right, just put you over here. We'll put baby in the corner for now. Um, yeah, you're you're served. You're able to eat. Uh, soldiers and officers are kind of coming and going. You know that it's it's fairly quiet, especially in the morning, because the soldiers tend to rise significantly earlier than you mercenaries do, um, and they just kind of get to training, and then they're kind of just going in shifts. Um, you know taking breaks and then going back to training, and their breaks aren't generally that long, just a breather. All right, so for everybody else who's still in the room, uh, Vendar seems to have returned to the room in silence. Everything is all set with the quartermaster. Yeah, it was just a little thing. I think uh, Vendar can tell that there is um, hesitance on the word quartermaster because I think when Vendar had described where he was going. <laughs> Like the, like the direction he was going, it was clear that that was not where he was going. It's, and then, it was clear that it was then, away from the bivouac, <laughs> which is where you'd expect him to go yeah. for the, yeah, the quartermaster. This is true. Um, now, I will remind that, you know, if there is ever something that you want to do socially, but you can't personally think of the words to describe it, but you know your character should be good at it, you can always say, hey, I want to roll the light of my friend. <laughs> so, if... And you know it's important to maintain the deception of the devil, Vendar. You wanted to roll deception to say something that 
attempts to put your friend here at ease so that he doesn't pry into something that would end up breaking your deal, that's a very reasonable request to make. <laughs> Unless I, say, I don't you know think I can is. beat Vendar, like, <laughs> which no is why what he rolls. <laughs> which is why I, I think... say it, just because like because he if he wants to spin a tail, he can, but it's going to be really hard just because we all know what's up. So I, being cognizant of that, I think it's reasonable to say I just want to roll the lie. <laughs> mm-hmm. I also think that Vendar probably gets the impression from Laramendis that he's not like prying for the sake of prying he's he's asking basically like is there a thing that i should that we should be concerned about is more more what he's getting at with his like tone for that yes would you like to spin would you like to deceive laramendus tell him something i don't know Uh, would you like to spin it or would you like to roll it I would like to roll it, and I rolled it. I rolled a nineteen, egg, so it's a thirty-five. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure your insight doesn't go that high, does yeah. it? So yeah. my, if I if I crit on my insight, and also I don't think this is a, a situation that Laramidas mm. would roll for. I think that he's trusting that Vendar would be honest about the things that he needed to be honest about. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but if I crit, I would get a 26. Oh, all right. So, yeah, I mean... So, I think even if you roll a 1, which becomes a 10... <laughs> um, yeah, you, uh, you, you oh. spin a tale about this conversation you had with the Quartermaster. It was just some uh, weird little numbers snafu, uh, and they chose to talk to you specifically because uh, uh, they didn't uh, want to bother the general with this since they needed him to do something else. Like, it's this really kind of windy, windy tale that, uh, honestly, it makes a lot of sense. It's just a bit surprising. And it's just like, okay, yeah, they're considerate, I guess. Cool. <laughs> uh, but it, it, it seems completely, entirely genuine, and there is literally no reason to even question it because... It's extremely believable. There is a bureaucracy here, and the people involved in the bureaucracy are learning bureaucracy. (laughs) Fair enough. The bureaucracy is strong with this one. It really isn't. (laughs) (laughs) But they're trying, goddammit. Uh, so yes, you convince Laramendus and anybody else in earshot that it was a completely harmless conversation uh, about some logistics with the Quartermaster, just as the soldier vaguely presented it to you when you left earlier. Well, that makes perfect sense. No reason to worry. That's yeah, all good. Excellent. Um... We probably should soon. I, th- I think this this will be over the bond so that uh, Yukikaze can hear it. Mm-hmm. Um, we probably should sooner rather than later uh, address the situation with coffers. Uh, if we are going to use my spell to interrogate him last night. Uh, or if we want to go and speak with him in the present or anything like that, it would be best to have information as soon as we can. Because I, I think, I think Laramendus and Leah informed the party after waking up about the conversation, I, I think that happened, but I'm not actually positive. Um, I think that it was brought up. So we're saying this was actually mentioned as everyone was getting up, or... okay. So, so the the discussion about the situation happened before you would have left the room? It would have happened before Vendar left to go and oh, uh, all right. talk to Quartermaster? Uh, so now that Vendar is back, Laramidus is bringing it up again uh, before everyone like well and truly disperses to their duties. 
<laughs> oh, so are you going to get a... Okay, well, I did go downstairs, just... Yes, but that's why it's over the bottom, so you are on a plane oh. of existence. Yeah, so... All right. <laughs> I, I, I didn't catch that part. Yeah. Um, and because it's, I think, a useful piece of scene dressing context, I will mention uh, that one of the other things that I was figuring out the date about was we wanted to know when the army had originally intended to move. And so according mm -hmm. uh, to my notes here, um, today is the 6th of the seven days that you were given by Tatsuya to retrieve the white scale, meaning that tomorrow you were intended to return with the white scale and he would have gathered his army to depart that day. So this is their last planned day of training. Now, you have used the money that you stole from Tatsuya's corpse uh, to pay for another month here at the inn, but it has also been impressed upon uh, Yukikaze, specifically by Thandros, that while you can spend another month here training, the threat of the dragons increases potentially exponentially during that time, and the uh, morale of the, the army, even while their training is going to improve it some, is overall probably going to falter uh, the more you make them wait for this battle that they're anticipating. And they were all pre being prepared by Tatsuya and his underlings to leave tomorrow. So that's something to bear in mind with whatever plans you end up making, whatever you want to do. Did we know how long the army was intending to travel? Because I think we had talked about yes. setting the travel... T basically... To meet up with the would army. arrive when they thought they would arrive, but they would just have that more training time. Was I think what we yeah were, uh, I had I had given you a rough estimate with good weather since they were originally mm -hmm. going to sail and then march uh, yeah. of about twenty days, meaning okay. that with this, you know, the with this extra month you'd be right about at the same time getting there if you were to teleport at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Well, it was also in the sense that we were coordinating to meet no when the other armies were getting there from the other places so that we would arrive all at the same time. And that's harder to know. You only know that the, um, the army from the Empire of the Four Queens uh, should be passing through Shirkawa about now-ish. Potentially yesterday or the day before being their start on that. Um, but you also don't have any, like, good communication lines to there. Yeah, and that was what we were trying to figure out, too. Right. Right. Yeah, I think one of the things that we wanted to try and work on also soon was establishing that communication. I think that should be one of our course of actions along with dealing, or seeing what, uh, inquiring about coffers. Right. <laughs> okay, I was going to say that I think we should try to get into contact with the Empire of the Four Queens and see when they arrive. And, and, you know, we want them to get there as soon as possible, and then we just get, we teleport when they're going to get there. All right. DM thinks that sounds reasonable. How does the rest of the party feel? That makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so, from my understanding, our plan is to make a bridge, uh, using, uh, to Dimming Plane, right? Yes. Uh, do we have a consistent, uh, method to get Evangard? That depends on the amount of prep time. Uh, if we need to do things extremely quickly, then uh, likely it would be a teleport on your end to get us to the general area where we want to go, and then go from there. If we want to have uh, the day before be a, a bit of prep work, we can plane shift to be able to be more precise in where we're going. Um... I do think that we should be 
spending some time scrying different areas uh, near Watchtower Point so that we can find a good staging area and determine what we can of the city's draconic situation, if any. Yeah, with uh, the magic in, that's all you guys. You guys have a better grasp of that than I can. I don't I don't think I can put any good input in. I do one thing. You know how much time we have? Uh, we don't currently know when the army from the Empire of the Four Queens is going to arrive, which is uh, likely going to dictate when we are going to arrive. So I think determining that information is uh, one of the highest priority things that um, we can do. All right. Now I forget that we don't have a contact there that we get a hold of, right? I, the, was that a Tatsu thing? I'm drawing a blank. I'm sorry, out of character. Uh, it's possible that Tatsuya had a contact there. Uh, but, but we don't. That's what I'm getting at. We do not. Uh, I think when we had talked about it before, our plan was to see if Gabriel knew who we could be in, who we could get in touch with. Okay. Play sending telephone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, should we, uh... Buddy. We lost Leah. Oh, we lost Leah. Leah's in the AFK channel. Oh, no. Um... <sighs> so let's, uh... Let's discuss... So... Well... <laughs> Leah's gone. Oh, there. There's Leah. Um... Uh, should we discuss what happened with coffers in detail and then go from there first and then approach everything else... Uh, or approach this, the getting a hold of the Emperor or the Empire of the Four Queens next. I I think what Leah saw with Coffers was fully conveyed. So was the, it, oh, the okay. thing with Coffers is how we want to approach it. Uh, right, if we want to talk to him last night. Or if we want to talk to him now. How how much of strain is that magic of yours to like spy on the past or whatever? The spying is not Re a... Re Re is <laughs> ugly term. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> okay, read <laughs> the past. <laughs> I can, uh, with an 8th level spell, I can give us two hour, a 2 hour window to speak with him. Uh, with a, which would also use one of my sorcery points. Uh, with a ninth level spell, I can give us a 24 hour window. Uh, it's not worth the 7th level spell. Oh, uh, okay. give us a 2 minute window. Oh, okay. It was just wondering for the sense of, like, just, uh, maybe seeing what he was up to, to see if it's to be something to be concerned about or if we should just directly ask him. I mean, if we're going to be talking to him in the past, there's no reason to try and see over his shoulder what he's writing. If, worst case scenario, somebody decks him and then we lick through his book. <laughs> <laughs> like, he looks at Riken as he says, as he, like, teleports that. <laughs> Okay. If that's the game, then we could do that. I think that it's best to talk to him. In which case, we don't need to spy on him. Well, yeah. Talk to okay. him. I don't want to do stuff while your spell slots already. I don't know. Yeah. I kind of vote for play a B a little bit. A vendor is, I think, trying to talk. Uh, uh, he's but... just flashing. Oh. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, like we can hear you now. Okay. I wasn't trying to talk. He was just flashing. Okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure that I'm, I'm trying to keep an eye just um, should we, should we just proceed with things and then just keep a close eye on them? I I trust <laughs> Leah's gut enough that I think that we should probably speak with him. 
whether that's in the past or just now. Yeah, I have, uh, a, I have a very strong feeling here. up to no good. He's probably he seem to hide something from me. I would be surprised if he still has the uh, the sentiment of like even some of these soldiers already that believe that are not just believe think that or feel that our deception was a deception. <laughs> Or succeeded to see through our deception, I should say. Well, he is very likely one of Tatsio's closer confidants within the army. Um, so I would, given his position with the funds. So I wouldn't be. You learn a lot if you're doing the books. Oh yeah. Well, I, that's why I said I don't. I wouldn't be surprised if he's trying to get evidence against us. Oh, okay. So I could compromise everything. I don't think that an eighth level spell is too um, high of a cost to determine this information. Yeah, you get two, right? I have two, and uh, my simulacrum is also capable of casting it. Oh, that's a plus. I would prefer to cast it myself just to save its resources in case it's necessary at a different point. But Hey, well, do you know your own magic better than I do, so. But so you you're kind of leaning toward doing the the uh addressing them in the past. Now this uh, this is only reliving the past. It's not it's not actually the past. I forget if you said that. Right, uh, it, it's an illusion of the past. A very um, uh, realistic. <laughs> yes, a very realistic illusion. <laughs> but anything we do there does not impact the present. Okay. Outside of. Uh, anything that happens to present people inside uh, and the thickness that they learn. Okay. So is everyone in agreement with that? Or do everyone feel that, that that's the best approach uh, as of right now? I think that's yeah. really scary, but yes, we can do it. Uh, it has, as time has gone on, dawned on me more the um, schemes that it could be used yeah. with. It's incredibly dangerous. At least you have to be an incredibly high level to use it. I, well, you're, oh, and you're the one that wants or is following. Uh, uh, what's her, or the what god is that the the God of Truth. <laughs> uh, I own uh, the I goddess of knowledge. Goddess of knowledge, yep. So you gotta decide really hard if you want to share that with everyone. <laughs> knowledge you could obtain with it. So much knowledge. All the knowledge. Almost all. With a long enough time frame. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish my meal and then come up. And so, if you guys want to finish up what you're doing to go address this, or she will have more two of us do it. I mean, I think that uh, we can probably eat ourselves. Uh, I do also need to speak with Ruby, right? Poison this guy. Ruby is the one who owns this place. Uh, yes, Ruby is the person who was okay. placed. Sorry, I was just making adjustments to my own audio setup, so I had everything muted. Fair enough. Uh, I do also need to speak to Ruby about um, fabricating the wall to that room. Uh, and see if she is aware of somebody who should have come down from their room by this time today and has not. All right, well, I'll be a fly on the wall in the bond if you need me. I think Laramid is going to 
go downstairs after having said that, unless anyone intends to stop him. Nope. Riken's going to head down as well to go eat. So is Leah. Oh, actually. No, Leah's going to the bar first. Um, dealing with the morning routine. And then she'll go. Bath sounds good, Leah. Baths are great. Get all cleaned up. Yes, I am on again. Okay, cool. Um, very well. Uh, oh. You're gonna head to the bath in the Magnificent Mansion, or find the inn's bath? Um, no, she's gonna use the Magnificent Mansion. Because it's... It's a bath fun. you know. And, yeah, and I know some of them isn't gonna walk in. Yes. All very true statements. Okay, so... Uh, Rowan walks in. <laughs> I was gonna say, did Rowan go into the mansion when Slurman has recreated it? Absolutely. Yeah, Rowan did, I remember that, yes. <gasps> aren't, aren't there separate bathrooms? No, there's just the one. Ugh. I assume it locks. Lock. <laughs> yeah, if the door has to lock, she will lock it. I was saying the intro is a joke, but yes, you... <laughs> That would have just been a habit by now, having yep. lived with men to, to just lock the door. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair enough. And you know, you got uh, you got Lorelai to to watch your back as well. Yeah. I don't imagine that there will be any problem with Rowan, but I could be wrong. None that I see. Possible hit. You might knock, trying to find out if hide or not, but. Nothing beyond that. Alright. So. You go to do that. Meanwhile, the rest of you head downstairs where Yukikaze is, uh... You've finished your meal, you're finishing your meal. Uh, what's your plan here? Uh... Well... Depending on whether they need me or... Larman's to spell here shortly. I will finish my meal and then check in with office the other officers in charge of the training and make sure everything's going and I'm not needed anywhere so in particular and put my input in and or assist with anything I need to assist with. Well, you were missing for just about almost all of yesterday, so they are going to expect you uh, to be overseeing the training at the very least, if not... Um, you know, giving feedback and participating, or at least the officers are going to be meeting and conferring about what they need to be doing, and they're going to be wanting your directives. So there is going to be, especially because tomorrow was supposed to be the day to leave, There's you're going to feel this tension in the air, like, even though you've kind of said you're not leaving tomorrow, I, I don't know that that announcement was ever fully made to the whole army. Um... And so there's a, there's a lot of concern that things, people training, aren't at the level they should be at. So that's what you get the the sense of people coming into talking to you as you're finishing your breakfast. Okay. So yeah, I'll be addressing all that stuff while everyone else is doing what they're doing. So with me finishing eating, uh, unless I'm being called upon by any of the party members, I will be doing those things. And because you are a uh, strong leader, it is assumed that you are capable of handling all of those. So, party, you are downstairs. Um, please tell me what it is you wish to do down here. Uh, Lara Mendes wants to go and talk to Ruby. Right. Lara Mendes wants to go and talk to Ruby. There he is. Alright. Um, the other four of you... What are you planning to do? Be part of that conversation? Have a different conversation? Go and start training? Uh, I assume the simulacra are already sent off. We're going to just hand wave that and say that they're already off helping with training? Uh, yeah. I think that's fair. Would we all, wait, uh, I was also allowed to direct those, what, what, wasn't I? I believe yeah, that you, you and Thandros moment. were added, yes. Okay. I added the entire party with Thandros at the level below the all right, I will. I will be uh, taking directive over the simulacrums and placing them where they need to go. Okay. So the simulacra are in play. 
Um, so, uh, Jebel. Uh, there has been discussion that uh, Laramentis wants to cast a spell to understand Koffer's position on things and wants to talk to Ruby. Are either of those things that you wish to be a part of? Uh, uh the Koffer's thing. Koffer's thing. Okay, so you're going to hang until Lara is done with his conversation to be a part of that other thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, so Laramentis' intention, just so people are aware, to talk to Ruby about the, the fabricate thing have food, and then go do coffer stuff. Okay. Uh, Riken, same question. Are either of those things, plus breakfast, what you want to be participating in right now? Uh, I thought Riken was going to be, uh, part of the coffers thing, just in case, uh... Just in case somebody wrong. needs to I knock him out. Punchy, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm just imagining... Like, you know, we finish, right? Let's say it like takes like 45 minutes to finish. So that's, you know, an hour and 15 minutes where we don't need it. it and then Riken just like leaving to reset it, coming back in, just decking him, leaving to reset it, just coming and decking him. <laughs> over and over. <laughs> Cyrus, same question. Uh, Cyrus so probably uh, focused on trying to write a sin to uh, alleviate some of his mother's stress. Not Good. No, exactly. How bad? <laughs> and uh, at some point, are you planning to go and participate in army stuff with Seltharis, or leave that uh, to the Simulacra? I will go participate in army stuff. Probably once that's sent. Let's okay. Get that out of the way until I, like he'll be there this evening or something like that. Okay. So you will um recuse yourself. You'll forego the, the coffer stuff and the conversation with Ruby. You'll do breakfast and then you'll go army. Is that accurate? Breakfast Sunday North. Cool. And then, uh, fingers crossed here, Vendar. I really want to check out that smoke stuff, but I'll do that later. I'll... Am I needed for the... I'm not needed for the... If you don't feel like you're Coffee, needed, and you okay. feel like there's something else your character wants to do, then then I believe your character can decide they are not yeah. they are not needed. Um, I, I, everyone's okay. welcome for the coffers thing, but uh, like we're gonna be talking over the bond. So in in case, unless you want to be somebody like more fully directing questions, then uh, I think I'm good. I think I'm gonna train with the army. I'm gonna, I'm gonna train them how to use the guns. All right, I like the sound of that. All right, I'm going to stick you over here with Cyrus, then. All right, so then we will have a uh, conversation with Ruby. So, um, the the place is fairly quiet as it's, um, you know, mid-morning right now. Uh, you've been up for a bit over an hour at this point. Um, place at, you know, I don't know, 9.30 in the morning-ish. Uh, there's one or two people here. You see, you know, people kind of come and go one or two at a time, minutes and minutes apart. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty dead in here. Uh, the rest of the army is out training. Um, so she's just cleaning things, uh, passing in and out of the kitchen to make sure that whatever is cooking for later or not the now is not burning, uh, and issuing orders to the, the people working with her. So you approach the, the counter, um, you know, let's say right as she's uh, coming out uh, back from the kitchen, uh, and she, you know, seems to be uh, reaching to take a glass when, uh, you know, to continue scrubbing it in that classic bartender gesture uh, when she, you know, makes eye contact. She says, ah, the generals are awake. Well, what can I do for you? Uh, I think we'd all like some breakfast, but um, before that, I wanted to apologize for my... Uh, being too busy yesterday to fabricate the wall. If we have the materials, and go about doing uh, as soon as they can be brought up. Uh, she'll kind of, you know, sweep a finger, uh, you know, toward the door and just say, "You'll find plenty of materials out there: wood and stone, whatever you might need, plasters." Um, there's plenty of buildings that uh, weren't able to be rebuilt or aren't worth it whose material can be used. 
I assume your magic's just going to convert the busted up wood into something usable, so grab whatever scraps you need. Excellent. I, I look at Riken as I say that. <laughs> I'm not lifting shit. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> the <laughs> real reason Riken's here is to, to help the, as the muscle. Uh, I did have another question for you. Sure. Um, Shoot. I imagine that you have a pretty good idea of uh, who's been coming and going from here. Is there somebody uh, who you're used to seeing in the mornings who hasn't come down yet? Hasn't come down yet? No, I can't say that that's, uh, that's held today. Um, I'm used to seeing... It's pretty much just the officers... Uh, that use the rooms here. All of the soldiers, they have their, their camp out there, their tents, uh, and that's where they're made to stay. Um, some are allowed to come to eat here, you know, uh, this and that, uh, whatever they've earned it, but uh, I pretty much service just the officers here, and uh, there isn't anyone in particular I could think hasn't uh, made the rounds this morning. Somebody you're missing? I think that there might be, but I'm trying to to see if that suspicion is accurate. But thank hmm. you. All right. Well, I mean, I know you're new here, so if you don't know their name, you can describe them to me. Maybe I can figure out who you're talking about. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know what they would look like. Oh. Which is not very helpful. No, that's an unfortunate state to be in. Well, if you figure out who it is you're looking for, name or description, um, you know, just let me know. Uh, they've been crashing my place a while, so I'm pretty good with faces. I'll do what I can to help you. Thank you very much. And if it does seem to be that somebody is missing, uh, if you could let me know. Uh, yes, uh, if, it, um, if it comes up. Uh, if it, it if it triggers anything for me, I'll, uh, I will let you know. Um, then, I'll get your breakfast going. I assume you will give an order, and uh, yeah. uh, she'll bring that out. Um, you can head over, eat that with the others. Uh, it's a pretty hearty filling breakfast. Um, I believe the the uh, scenario, the, the the setup was that um, that money that you're paying is room and board here, so people eat when they need to eat, and they don't get charged per meal. I don't remember charging you guys at all for the meals, did I? I I don't, no, think, I don't think so. so. I think it would make sense if basically just she provided a you know, like, the cost of everything to the military. Yeah. It was just handled that way, just for everyone's logistics. Yeah. Alright. Uh, I do have one other question for Yukikaze, since I mentioned it earlier, um, but it would be good to know. I said that I didn't think that you had announced to your army at large uh, that there would be an extension on the stay here. Is that something you're planning to do today, holding off until you know more from the other spells you're wanting to cast? Uh, do you have a plan think, for it? I think with the news of um, coffers, uh, with what happened last night, until I know what's going on with that, I will just run, or I'll just handle training and drills until we find out the deal with that, and then I will address the army. Um... It, it will be enlarged to let them know that we have found a faster and more efficient way means of travel so, and that we're able to train a little more until we meet up with the army or, so that our timing will be precise with meeting up with the Empire of the Four Queens. I see. If the army knows we're me uh, my character knows that the army already knows that we're meeting up with them. Your character knows that. It was never clear. Soldiers are soldiers. It was. It's just as likely that they didn't know that was part of the plan. Okay, so I will address it in the... 
I have a plan for addressing it in the sense of that uh, I know the travel time for the other army and our faster means of travel and also to keep our stamina up mm -hmm. will make it so we meet up with the extended time. Okay. So that's what I plan to do, just so kind of a heads up. Okay, so you plan to run things that way. I just wanted to point out that you are going to be hearing, you know, a lot of the um, the trainers, the instructors, the drill sergeants, the people who are running these things to train your soldiers are going to be... Uh, In my response to that, I know what you're getting at. In my response to when I hear, hear the, uh, the concern or anything, I will go up to them and say... Uh, uh, I just sorry. I, I just have it overhear you. I have an announcement to make later about that, so don't worry. And let's just focus on training. Yes, um, and that's well and good. I sorry. Did wanted I wanted to impress upon you that what you're hearing is that they're uh, using it as a motivator to say, you know, we're going to be shoving you on a boat tomorrow, so you better be ready to fight dragons when you hop oh. off that boat. Training doesn't stop. Once we get on that boat, these are the types of things you're hearing. Oh, I, I apologize. I, should, I should jumped the gun with that. Then. It's okay. With what you're I apologize. Um, I will... I am not going to interrupt that motivation because I feel it would cause confusion. So yeah. I will not address that. Okay. And just wait for the later announcement because if I address that now, singularity, I think it would cause confusion, which yeah. I'm not going to do. I agree with that. Uh, I think that's a good call. Alright. Yeah, good enough. Alright. You guys have a nice breakfast. Say you spend, you know, 45 minutes an hour eating that. Just, uh... I don't know. Chatting either in voice or uh, in uh, over the bond, uh, but you can all keep each other uh, apprised. I don't know what image you're going for, what your public image is, if you <laughs> talk about the weather or whatever out loud, or if you uh, voice any of your more personal concerns out loud, or if everybody just sees you kind of staring meaningfully at, at each other while you eat <laughs> and not saying anything. I think uh, Laramendis, it like in the absence of somebody else jumping in for a like topic, Laramendis is going to just talk about dragons. <laughs> <laughs> just get, just right? like just let as much like information about how dragons function on a on a um uh, uh physical <laughs> level can't think of the right word, anatomical level, uh, let that knowledge osmos out into the army so they can have a better idea what they're up against. Yeah. Gosh. There's a very good chance that Cyrus has no clue why this is being talked about, but will very enthusiastically join in on the conversation. <laughs> is he also not on the bond? He might be, he might not be, but I mean... <laughs> Dragons are of interest to him. Dragons are of interest to him. Uh, yeah, everybody learns a little bit about dragons. Everybody around you learns a little bit about dragons. Okay, so, you eat breakfast. Now you're going to, uh, Vendar. Uh, you're going to go with Cyrus and begin training the army in your, uh, unique ways. Bop you right out here. Boop. Who's that? That's fine. What's the local Black Rose? Pop you. Boop. So, as it has been happening on previous days, um, large portions of the army are training in the two-mile area that uh, Jebel and Laramendus created. The um, large snowy mountain and the uneven uh, wintry terrain, uh, just sort of learning to survive in it as a, uh, it seems like a, a blizzard has kicked up, uh, just completely confined within that two mile square, um, and there are some spots in it that you just can't see, full whiteout condition. Alright, so, and then there were three. 
So, the three of you are going to head up to Tatsuya's room, or are you going to go out to do the uh, fabricate first? I think uh, Laramendus wants to do the fabricate first. Okay. Yeah. His concerns about somebody having entered the room. And All right. What kind of uh, what kind of spell time casting time does that have? Uh, fabricate is ten minutes to cast. Ten minutes to cast. Um. All right. So, uh, and Riken, your strength is what twenty two. It is 22. What's your con? My con is 18. Okay. I want you to give me uh, three strength athletics checks and two con saving throws. Three strength athletic checks. Yep. And Jebel, he's going to be, you know, being directed by Laramendus what bits of material to grab for this spell. Are you going to watch, or do you feel like helping him? I can help if he needs it. You've got, what, infinite wild shape now, so you can just become any strong creature you want? I can. So you become uh... a jellyfish. <laughs> <laughs> Bloop. I tease the kid. Uh oh. It's a man of war. <laughs> I think I'm gonna use my uh, inspiration. <laughs> oh damn! <laughs> Things are going well already. I mean, the first two rolls for strength were great. The second one, or the third one, not so great. That one wasn't that much better, but it was better. <laughs> better is better. Technically right, better. So the best kind two, of better. Two constitution. Yes, two constitution saving throws, since of course I don't have a constitution skill anymore. Okay. You know, like endurance. And you can just have him roll uh, constitution. I know, I can. Doesn't need to be a saving throw. But he's better at saving you throws. Mean <laughs> I am better at saving throws. <laughs> All right, tell me about these strength checks. All right, um, strength. I rolled a twenty, then a twenty-four, and then an eleven. <laughs> uh, the third roll was a nine, so I went up two points. <laughs> And the con um, saving throws. The con was 28 and 24. Okay, so you're not winded, but that last chunk of material that Lerman is like, yeah, that piece of wood looks like that's a good one there. I, you know, we, let's make the wall. Let's leave the place better than we found it. Grab that one. You're, you know, like, you're really confident. You just sort of like jam your hands into this pile of debris and go to go to yank it out. And it just seems to be stuck at first. You know, it, maybe it's a little heavier than you thought. You really try to put your back into it. Um, and, uh, and it just won't give. Um, you... Uh, <laughs> You know, you you pull and you're pulling. Eventually, you you just you lose your grip. You slip. You fall down. You know, you tumble through the dirt a little bit. You dust yourself off, aggravate, and you go and you kick it, and the thing breaks off, and you find out that it's like this massive piece of wood that's actually sunken into the soft earth, which is why you couldn't move it, and it looked a lot smaller than it was. But you kick the damn thing out of anger and break off a goodly chunk, and there are like, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> Uh, how long has this been here that it somehow sunk into the earth? I mean, I imagine it sunk in a bit when the whole incident occurred. <laughs> this is just ground, right? Well, it's an island, so it's really no, sandy. I mean, like, so it's, it's just, it's just ground. It's just this is just the ground, just yeah. normal ground. Like it's not. Not what quicksand? Uh, not um, not worked stone. Not worked stone. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, it is not worked stone. 
So I'm gonna poly, not poly, wild shape into Earth Elemental. Ooh, look at that. I guess look cool looking now. That's a new one. Uh, I'm just gonna try and like see. Can I just scoop my hand in and try and get underneath this thing and then just lift it up? Uh, yeah, I think so. With Earth Glide, you're able to just dip your big stony hands right into the ground like it's water. You know, you get up underneath this wood, which is worked wood, so it comes in solid into your hands, and you can just begin to pull it up. You still have to work against the ground a little bit here. Like, you don't bestow Earth Glide onto the thing you're grabbing, cause since it's so large. So you do see the rock, this giant rock struggling. You hear the creaking and grinding of the stones of its body as it pulls and pulls, but eventually you get this massive log it must have been like the the 40 or 50 foot side of a building and this is just one of the beams it was an entire tree that made this thing um that had been you know cut down you can actually as you pull it up you see that um what was hidden beneath the ground uh was a a portion of it that had been um it, it I want to call it something like a molding, right? It's got a, an intricate design on it, marred from its time in the earth and covered in, in, in dirt. Um, but you can see that there's a lot of um, etchings, carvings upon it that it seem to be uh, letters, um, perhaps dwarvish or... Yeah, probably dwarvish. Does anybody speak dwarvish? I do. I have three lessons in Torvish. <laughs> you can roll! <laughs> or can you? Do you need five lessons before you can roll? I don't remember what the minimum was. I think was. it was three was just to roll, but, like, it's just... Right, but, yeah, Probably it's a shit It's like a DC-25 intelligence check Yeah, or it's, it's just a massively <laughs> high DC. But, yeah, you can roll. No, it's five. Okay. Not the guy who actually knows the language. So, it's it's hard to make out because of the time uh, in, in the ground... Um, it's, it's probably been there, you know, over a month since Elsamanth rose and attacked this place, um, just moldering there, um, but it appears to say, uh, it, it appears to be a number, perhaps a date, um, and a name, um, at your best guess, this is like a cornerstone type deal where they're saying when a particular building was established or who it belonged to. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, the rest of it, there seems to be hard to make out, but some sort of intricate design, and then, uh, lettering that, filling in some gaps, um, seems to be a, uh, uh like a carpenter's guild. Okay. So, you believe you know what this chunk of building had been before Elsamanth torched it. Mm -hmm. uh, Lermendus does convey the information to everyone else. He doesn't just stand there and go, ah, oh, I see. <laughs> just walk away. <laughs> You're not going to act like the wizard in my first ever 3-5 campaign? <laughs> Basically. Ah, interesting. Just walks off. <laughs> just walks off. <laughs> What's interesting? <laughs> Yeah. Motherfucker, what's interesting? <laughs> um, but yeah, if you wanted to bring this uh, log, you'll probably want to stay in, in Earth Elemental form, because this is a big ol' hunk and hunk of wood. Jebel. Uh, yeah. Sorry, just trying to get a sense if you want to take it with you or not. Do we need the whole thing? Uh, Laramanus, you do um, not feel you need the whole thing, no? I do not think we need the whole thing, no? <laughs> I'll bring it as far as the door. like. So the, <laughs> uh, so the, the range on the spell is 120 feet, so okay. like, which I think is like where you can be grabbing things from, because like, the description of the spell states like creating a bridge from a clump of trees. Kind of thing. So, like, it's intended to just. So, like, I imagine yeah. we've been like piling a bunch of stuff like under the window. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If, even if he puts it over by the door, it should be in range for you to pull from. If you're just over at the wall, let's 
80, 90 feet. Yeah. And, and I guess the spell will take whatever it needs to take, and then... <laughs> well, so that's just because this, uh, this building can't have a an underground basement, so it has an above-ground basement. <laughs> I learned. <laughs> no flooding in bodies in this inn, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> All right, so, you make your checks, the Earth Elemental helps significantly, and, no, there's this, um, once very nice, uh, piece of architecture, let's call it, um, that is probably a part of the history of this, uh, town, city. I should probably at some point name the city on Storm Reef. Storm Reef. <laughs> <laughs> like, I already did that with Thanon Deer, making the capital just Thanon City. <laughs> Looks like the others all kept the same shape. They just updated the Earth Elemental to be cool. Yeah, the Fire Elemental looks a bit different as well. Oh, did it? Oh, yeah. It's getting more of a face than it used to. Yeah, the Water Elemental as well. Looks really? Like a wave. Yeah, that looks exactly the same as it always did. Yeah, didn't it didn't it look like that before? I thought I it did. I don't think so. Uh, um, Leah went back to AFK. No, Leah. God, I need to change the timer on that. I think it should be Reef Storm. Reef Storm. So it could be Reef Storm Storm Revile. Oh, yeah. That rolls off the tongue really easily. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realize I got put in the FK again. Yeah, I wish it would make I a noise for people. I thought it was all that quiet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it seems to just silently, like, when you get moved there, it doesn't make any noise. And, like, I wish it would make the channel changing noise it, so that you'd it, be it like, actually, why did it actually, you? Huh? It actually did the first time, but it didn't now. Oh, weird. Anyway, it's okay. Um, alright, so. The, they got wood, you're going to go up and you're going to perform your spell. It takes ten minutes. You're able to pull uh, bits of material from the chunks that you had uh, Riken and Jebel gather, and you're able to rebuild the wall. Um, matching the color as best you can, it's... I believe it's would it just makes it from that material. It doesn't let you, like, change what that material is, does it? Uh, it... Does not. Okay. It would be it would be out of the material. It could probably be like shaped in certain kinds of ways. Oh yeah, I think the I imagine that it literally like breaks it down to components and then lets you build up whatever shape you want. But it's going to be of that wood. So this is a yep. slightly different colored wood. Um, probably a different type of tree altogether. So it's clear that. That it's not, uh, that something happened here, that this bit of wall is different from the rest of the bits of wall, um, but you have, uh, fixed it for all intents and purposes. Excellent. I'm gonna move you over to the stairs so you can get yourself upstairs. Uh, Riken, you, uh, you shot through the floor. Whee! <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Perfect. It solves the problem. It does. <laughs> are you are you going to use fabricate to recreate the bureau that was destroyed as well? Uh So I, I think that I could probably do that as part of this spell. Right. I wouldn't make you cast again. We're the same fabricate, yeah, yeah. so... Do you yeah, I don't to? see why not. Okay. Yeah. I gotta see if I can... Which... No. Not seeing it, so I'm gonna stick this here for now. Might have been it, but I don't think it was. Anyway. You recreate it. 
You, re you create that. <laughs> Whether or not that's correct, there is now a vanity. <laughs> Excellent. Zoop. And uh, you're more or less back in your brother's former room there, Riken. Uh, Jebel, I believe I left you on the first floor. But you come here as well. And uh, how long does it take you to cast the, uh, the lens? Uh, one minute. One minute. Use my eighth level spell. I will use a sorcery point. Where do I click you? You're somewhere on my sheet. There we go. Uh, so that'll. I, I was right. I'm right at eighth level up to an hour. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be two hours. Uh, and I, I know when Leah came to me, to like, to wake me up, and I know that that was pretty much immediately afterwards. So, I will probably, I, I, I suppose, that might end up having there be some overlap where <laughs> Leah walks in. There's a Leah. <laughs> <laughs> But so like, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick, um, like I wanted to to end maybe I'm fine with Leah showing up because we could just tell her the, you because you want to see what he does after she leaves, right? Um, I guess that one would be spying. That one would require us to be invisible. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... You want to be um, able to. Let me rephrase that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'll pick a two-hour time frame. Probably basically with Leah showing up, or where I think Leah's showing up to be in the in the middle of it. Okay, that's easy enough to aim for. Again, you've got um, your um, eidetic memory. Uh... <gasps> wait, uh, wait, question. Yeah. Does, like, do people respond to us being there? How yeah. can they see us? Yeah, the, the illusions, yes. Yeah. So when Leah shows up, I will have you enter that scene. <laughs> Probably being surprised that there are, that we're there yeah. when you left us asleep in the other room. Yeah. Where but, would... Well, won't I join the illusion? Like, won't I join watching? What do you mean? Did you want to be... Oh, wait. Uh, You're right. This is actually my fault. Leah bathed. And then I never grabbed her again. So... Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, what do you think this this bathing... How long is Leah going to spend on that? Is that like... Not not, not that long. It's, it's not like a full-on bathe. It's, it's more like she prepares morning, morning routines. Sure. So since they left you, about an hour and 20-ish minutes has elapsed. So you tell me. You tell me about Leah. Is she just going to be in there for like 5, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour? Probably... No, probably like five ten minutes or something, and then she goes eat. Okay. So she's with Riken and the rest when. Okay. Uh, then, yeah. Items. I apologize. That's entirely on me. Um, you are uh here with. I gotta grab Jebel because he hasn't grabbed himself. Yeah. Ew. Shut up. Yes. Before casting the spell, Ramendus <laughs> will run by everyone his intended time frame. So we yeah, have but... an hour before Leah would show up uh, to discuss with him what he's up to, try and figure things out, uh, and then if we, I mean, if we want to reset things, we can leave and come back. But somebody could be invisible to. Um, keep an eye on him after Leah has left. 
Yeah, well, that, I'm confused. Because... If I'm there and then I'm there again, and there's two of me, mm -hmm. or that won't that be a problem? Uh, if it becomes enough of a problem, we can just leave and then come back and talk to him from the beginning. Um, okay. What's the duration of this ability? Um... I can also just cast invisibility on you uh, when you would show up if and that's what you want. We want that to also confuse the illusion. That I've just been there and then I arrive. Uh, I mean, if we want to continue tricking the illusion, then you can go to leave the room. Cast invisibility this is, and then this come is back. Breaking, <laughs> this is all breaking my brain. I don't understand all of this. So, uh, the, the, the main purpose of this isn't to spy on him after you left. The main purpose is to talk with him in a way that will not impact present him. I thought it said that to... nothing in this thing will impact the present. Right. But if we go and talk to him now to get information no. out of him about what he's up to then it will impact him in the present but if we talk okay. to him mm. in the past it won't I see, I see yeah, and make, make, make me invisible might make this better, I guess but I want to see I don't want to be left out Uh, I, I will cast invisibility on you before you walk in. Okay. How do we know the past team will actually share any of the information? I look to Riken. Uh, what? <laughs> why, are you, why are you looking at me for? <laughs> So I, I I think Laramendis is a little confused because like Laramendis had suggested decking the guy, and Ryken had been very excited to deck uh, offers. Uh, I mean, if if he doesn't share information, then wham! I do think that we can try just <laughs> speaking to him in a way that we now need to be less cautious of tipping him off about anything. <gasps> Since he doesn't exist. Hmm. Yeah, this is just fake coffers. Foffers. <laughs> Are there any concerns before I cast my spell? Fockers. Once, twice, three times the lady. <laughs> Did you say that on the bond? Uh, yes. I think we were we've been talking on the bond. All right. I would recommend either have someone to kind of police the hallway or anything to keep people from. Does because does it stretch? You control the size, right? Uh, when we had cast it before, it had been only in this room, or it maybe extended out the other way. But it hadn't gone into the hallway. Oh, okay. I just say, like, have it to where you lock the door behind you or something so someone just doesn't accidentally wander in. Yeah, like, I think we'll close the door, cast the spell. Um, and now the wall is fixed, so somebody isn't walking in that way. Um, which means they'd have to come in through the door. And then I'd have a conversation with them about walking into purple walls of magic that they don't understand. <laughs> okay. 
unless there are any other uh, comments, coffers time. All right. You begin casting your spell. How far are you letting the illusion extend? Are you going to keep it to the confines of this room so you'll only be able to see things as they penetrate the wall or door? Or are you going to let it extend further out? Uh, just the room. Just the room. All right. You have set your timeline to be uh, roughly an hour before and after Leah caught him in there. And so, things begin to play out before you. The You mark out the edge of your spell, uh, looking at the bounds of the room through your um, spyglass. You have the spyglass. <laughs> uh, I mean, we had talked about doing this before we had split up. True. So I imagine if... I didn't have. I don't remember if I gave it back to Vendar, but I imagine. My that my, if my imagining is that it always goes back to Vendar shortly after doing the spell. But yes, it's it true. It's probably what Vendar wants. <laughs> it's it's true that you were together discussing it before you split up, so it is easy that he would have handed it off to you before he left to go do his thing with the army. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you look through the spyglass, you mark it out, and all of you uh, see the purple light begin expanding out uh, as a layer on the floor, and then it begins to, once it hits the walls, it begins to climb them, and you feel yourself engulfed in this cube of magic. Um, and as it rises up past your eyes, there's a momentary dizziness, uh, as it passes over, and you feel like you're being pushed through a doorway, um, but you blink and, uh, regain your balance, and you are in the same room. Uh, the only notable difference is that... So, you notice, um, that the wall and the, uh, the new, uh, vanity that, uh, Lair created are gone, uh, and... Okay, there we go. And it becomes night out all the windows you can see. Now, I will remind you that once you are inside, looking to where even the wall is, it still projects an illusion of anything beyond the wall. So you can look all the way down the hallway um, and see the dark uh, windows or up until the next wall, because someday I will finish making this second floor, but that day is not yesterday or today. Oops. It's nighttime now. The wall is once again missing. I am going to walk over and tap it with the staff to see. Um, as far as that goes, because the magic only goes to the wall, um, you find that there is no uh, bureau there, but th when you reach forward, your staff does stop as it technically leaves the bounds of the spell and hits the wall outside of it. Okay. But within the spell, reality has been altered. So you know that outside the spell, if the spell weren't there, there should also be a vanity there, which you would be standing inside of uh, where, you, where you were. Yes, I'm reminding myself that it's not merely illusion. Yeah. Next level illusion. It's advanced illusion. <laughs> um, and a great deal of nothing happens for quite some time, because apparently this is not near when Coffer showed up. Interesting. But you wait, I assume. Yeah. Play the waiting game. Okay. After about half an hour, you're going to hear footsteps, and Coffers is going to come into the room. And he's going to look around, and he's going to... You know, he, you'll see him pass his gaze around the room... Um, and then he's going to look at you and say, Generals, 
What are you doing in here? We thought we'd have another look around, uh, make sure that everything was where we thought it should be. What brings you here? I have taken it upon myself to make sure that the former general's affairs are in order, as no one else is seeing to that. Your general, Yukikaze, informed me that he would be gathering what information he needed and did not need me to collate it for him, but I suspect that he has somewhat less experience managing so large a force as I do, and I think he would benefit greatly from my assistance, though he seems reticent to accept it. Perhaps, Lieutenant General Laramendus, you could speak sense to him? Uh, I think Laramendus is nodding along with it. Like, this is an entirely reasonable thing. Uh, I am gonna <laughs> roll an insight check, but, like, he's not wrong. I'm rolling too. He's absolutely not wrong. Um, <laughs> It's a nine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a twenty-eight for me. God, Jesus Christ. Um, how about you, uh, uh, Riken or uh, Leah? <clears throat> uh, I mean, I got it. 16, so I didn't beat Jebel, that's for sure. I missed what Wally was gonna make. Insight. Insight. The man walked into Insight. the room and started talking, giving explanations, so people are wondering if they believe those explanations. I absolutely believe that, if nothing else, that is also part of his aim. <laughs> Hell, my passive insight was bigger than my role <laughs> by one <laughs> so 17 yes and Leah I'm trying to find out okay Said, okay, so uh, twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay. Um, everything he says makes logical sense, but there's something off. Uh, collectively, you kind of noted that um, looking around the room as though something had caught him off guard even before he addressed you. Did I notice him looking anywhere in particular in like a moment before he spoke to us like looking at like the chest or like like basically somewhere that I think that he might be concerned that we had found something he uh he definitely the scanned, could be no, he my, scanned my the room gone. what you notice is that he scanned the room and then he seemed to be focused past you before his eye focus came back to you like his eyes nudged over to mate with yours. Let's see, he had just said that, um, sorry, they've been enough time since the statement and because of our roles. Um, uh, he had asked you to speak sense to General Yukikaze because he believes that his assistance in running the army could be invaluable to him, but he's been <laughs> refusing it. Is not charismatic. <laughs> I, I think I'm no stranger to to 
uh, paperwork and the like. Perhaps we could work together on on things, and that might alleviate some of, um, of the General's concerns. If that is what you desire, Lieutenant General, I would be happy to be allowed to do my job. I <laughs> believe that I could still free you up to do your job if you let me do mine, but if you wish to ta tackle it together, <laughs> perhaps <laughs> I can make such dry paperwork more interesting through company. It will largely be tallying ledgers and making sure that we have what I believe we have, and that all of the former generals accounts are square. As the saying goes. <laughs> you good over there, Riken? Well, yep. Riken's just like, ugh, numbers. <laughs> <laughs> might I ask where in this room in particular you wanted to begin? I might be able to assist starting now. Well, I had begun by uh, going at the ledgers in the bureau there, the, the, uh, sorry, not the bureau, um, uh, In the wardrobe? Wardrobe, thank you. <laughs> my, 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 if, my mind wanted to do- Lerman, this would be very concerned. <laughs> yeah, no, my mind wanted to do a, a war word, and I was like, grimoire, no, yeah. boudoir, no, neither of those is correct. <laughs> what am I trying to say? <laughs> Wardrobe. An armoire. <laughs> yeah, actually, that works too. Um, but, uh, when we spoke, uh, General, Lieutenant General Riken, I believe it was. No. It was not. It was General Yukikaze. Sorry, that's the DM I'm trying to remember correctly. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was a lot going on at that point. <laughs> uh, General Yukikaze insisted that he how did he phrase it he didn't want us going over it twice me and then him so he would take care of it himself once which honestly just doesn't make any sense two sets of eyes at that point is better than one set especially if I am Correct in my guess about his freshness to such responsibility. I'm gonna be honest, out of character, Laramendus really likes this guy. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so I think um, while we've been talking, Larry Mendes has been conveying what Coffers has been saying over the bond, so that, and Larry Mendes, like, Larry Mendes has been basically repeating the conversation over the bond, so including what he's saying, so that people are aware, and if they want to chime in. Mm -hmm. You really think I came off that way? No, this guy's shifty as all heck. I imagine, like... Because, <laughs> like, not all the information is these, because he's just doing the finances, or the coffers. He doesn't need to know every aspect of what's going on. A secretary is a very useful person for a leader <laughs> in a military. No, no, no I, I get that. I get that. But, like... I guess I don't, I guess he's kind of got me there with not knowing, like, what things his secretary usually covers. But anyways, continue. <laughs> so, at this moment, as he's telling you this... Um, you are going to hear another set of footsteps, and Captain Rialanthes is going to walk through the door and look around at everyone here and say, Lieutenant General, what are you all doing up at this hour? We were just 
Interesting. Looking what is happening through. here? He says, looking at himself. <laughs> the the one <laughs> who's been talking to you is kind of yeah. looking back at himself, and you can see this wince on his face. Interesting. <laughs> uh, I also it, it is very clearly nighttime, right? Yes. It is very okay. clearly nighttime. Uh I I think I go to stand in front of the door. <laughs> and I say I think that we should have a talk about walking into magic uh, to to spells that you don't know the uh, <laughs> true meaning of. <laughs> <laughs> the two Thesses look at each other for a moment and back to you, and, and the newly arrived one says, Which of us are you speaking to, and why are you speaking to a copy of me? I'm speaking to that one, because you did not walk through a spell. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So, did you say that over the bond? Did I tell you to lock the door? Uh, I, I think we'd close the I don't know that we actually have the key. Quick question. Do you know which is which? Boy. Well, it depends on the setup that the DM wants. If it's going to be a skeleton key or if it's like a, a style that has a actual hard knob on the inside. Um, I think that it probably was something that got missed, but you know, I imagine that um... Ruby would have been able to provide you a key to the former general's room, now that you are the general's. Okay. It's not unreasonable for that to have been a thing that happened. Mm-hmm. Is there a reason you think that it shouldn't have happened? So, if, if my, then, my question then would be, is it unreasonable that Kofferus would also be given the same key, essentially? No. Is it unreasonable given his position? No. Yeah, yeah. So, basi basically just to say, like, presumably we locked it, and presumably it was unlocked? Yeah. But I am like, curious as to Yuki's question just there. <laughs> Which one is real? You mean Riken? Because I didn't ask that question. <laughs> no, that wasn't me. That was I'm... Derek. Yeah. Anyway, so, you now have two coffers. One looks thoroughly confused. You're trying to, like, mm -hmm. push over through him uh, to the door. Yeah. Uh, he's... Uh, so I think, uh, I guess Lerman will say, that is a, a, a telepath. That, that's a reasonable thing. Um, only one of them can walk through the wall. Riken, Riken's a telepath across the group. Am I going to have to deck two of them? No. Uh, I, we can answer this will. question easily. Uh, Larry, I just will say, uh, if each of you could go over to the hole in the wall that was uh, blown through it, and reach your hand all the way through. Ducking both of them would have been so much funner. <laughs> Again, they're going to kind of size each other up at once. <laughs> like... If they're not both trying to figure out exactly what's happening here, then the one who's faking it is doing a good job of looking like they're yeah. trying to figure out what's happening here. And they say, almost in unison, I can do that, of course, Lieutenant General, but what is the meaning? And they look at each other as they both say the same <laughs> words. <laughs> this... Well, I'm not sure I true. like the idea the, the new one who came in says, I'm not sure I like the idea of you interrogating some version of me with this is probably magic <laughs> the other one just sort of grunts says, I was about to say the same thing neither of them uh, has uh, moved just... to the wall yet <laughs> Larry Mendes doesn't respond he just like like looks over at the wall again it will go much quicker. 
Step this way. Step this way. They both sigh, rolling their eyes and, and holding their palms up heavenward. And they they move across. Real, real quick, am I? Are you are you still reciting this over the body? Uh, yes, I think that Larry Mendes is conveying everything over the bond. Uh, you could also play it off as you were testing a new magic. Uh, I am not that good of a liar. It is very clear what we were doing. So they both approach the wall, you know, sighing as though they could pull the heavens down with their breath. Uh... And as they, they, they get to the wall um, and, and uh, both look at this, this hole, um, they look to one another again and say, But how solid are we? And they, they both just reach out and their hands come together, kind of like mirrored. <laughs> as they kind of do this like explore, exploratory uh, little uh, seeing how, how real this illusion is. Mm. And finally, the, the newer arrival says, A simulacrum? Uh, have, have they... Have, am I clear on which one is... Uh, Newly arrived. And which one? one you were talking to originally. Okay. Uh, I mean, but uh, have they done the... Like, I want to see no. which one hit the wall. <laughs> no, they're definitely wasting time right now. He can push you. And it's going to be much less comfortable for one of you than the other. <laughs> Riken steps closer towards them. <laughs> <sighs> but what if this is, like, my perfect fantasy? Then we can have a conversation later. <sighs> Politics always does ruin the mood, doesn't it, me? It does, me. Dear They're going boy. to both sigh and reach toward the wall. And uh, the more newly arrived one is going to pass out into the hallway and say, What now? The other one's <laughs> hand seems to hit some invisible barrier. Uh, you are welcome to stay out there. It'll be easier for you. Okay. Lieutenant General. So. <laughs> he looks extremely chagrined. <laughs> Not quite a simulacrum. I can see that now, <laughs> Lieutenant General. What would you like to know? Clearly, you were here to interrogate the version of me that met with Lieutenant General Leah last night. Have I done something that has caused you to distrust my loyalty to this army? Other people can also chime in with us. <laughs> uh, well, we don't want to fuck it up either. <laughs> Being here in the middle of the night uh, raised enough of a concern into what might have been going on that we wanted to see what was happening. Leah was here in the middle of the night. Does that not concern you, her too? Her behavior is more well understood by us. I see. Well then, what can I tell you that might put your mind at ease Lieutenant's General. Uh, what were you looking for here, since the papers, as we had previously discussed, had already been moved? Since General Yukikaze had gone through the papers and refused my assistance, I assumed that this would be a staging area and there would still be papers that I could document and verify the record, transfer of goods, wealth, whatever it is that General Tatsuya had been working on before his reassignment so that everything was in as good order as I could make it. 
the army needs that. Or it will cease to be. You can't feed 4,000 people on a few scraps of burnt wood and the copper in your pocket. You may recall that I collected 1,500 gold pieces from you, Lieutenant General. I can't make money like that appear with regularity. And I doubt that former General Tatsia could have done so without help. So I was trying to find out what that help was. Uh, Lermanis is nodding along with everything that he's saying. Because we're going to need a continuation of that help for our efforts against the dragons to succeed. So, perhaps you can help me understand what our source of funds to maintain the army will be moving forward, since we do not have General Tatsuya, but perhaps... I haven't yet uncovered his sources. You have? Uh, so I'll say over the bond, uh, in response to his... Because you, you're still reciting it, right? Yes. Why go around a roundabout way and not just ask us directly? I'll pose that as a question, as a question you could ask if you wish. Like, or word it. Yeah, I just uh, want to know if, if that is being uh, said. I I'm conveying that to Laramandus. You do what you want with it. Uh, I think, Laramandus, is there a particular reason why you came here in the middle of the night look looking for additional paperwork instead of coming to one of us and even just asking to see the papers that you knew were removed from here? Because when I originally came to do my job, I was asked to leave, and then this place was filled with a strange magic spell for the next... 24 hours? Nearly. I had to wait for that Nearly. purple barrier to disappear. Going to Lieutenant General, no offense intended, but seemed to me would yield the same result as the first time. Thanks, but your help isn't needed. Why did you walk through the spell this time, then? This time I do mean a little bit of offense, Lieutenant General, so permission to speak freely. Granted, granted. After the way that I was treated by General Yukikaze and then Lieutenant General Leah last night, I thought it prudent to assume I was under suspicion, and so I had another soldier watching for when you would look upon this room again with your discerning eye so that I might intervene and learn what it is you know, since you wouldn't volunteer it to me. Uh, I got a comment to one of his other previous things there, man. This, uh, we could also say in the sense that, um, in our, uh, wait, when did we cast Tech Magic? We could say that we detected some magic and realized that there were traps that, uh, Tatsuya did not. Uh, forgot to convey to us, and we didn't want to alarm anyone. Um, uh, over the bond, I don't think there's any reason to say that it was neglected to be said to us. There's no reason for us to have told. Um, well, but just I'm thinking something along that lines that we we noticed something and we didn't want to raise concern. That's why we wanted to take it over, and then we we're going to convey stuff later, and we apologize if we insulted him or made him feel that way. This is just a, a thought. That uh, seems reasonable. The initial reason why the investigation here was taken on by us is that 
we realized there might be magic that was here. And when we came up to speak with you, uh, Leah determined that that was the case. The spell and everything else was for our investigation around the magics that were here. It's the reason the wall was gone. A trap? Yes. I can see the sense in such a thing. General Tatsuya was... Former General Tatsuya was leading a... struggling effort against the dragons, and most of these people, I'm certain the Lieutenant's General have noticed, are not soldiers as a way of life. So... I will accept whatever punishment for the insult I have given in misleading you just now, but... My conscience is clear because I felt... Insulted by the way I was treated previously. From outside the room, you just hear, Am I in trouble in there? <laughs> um, can I make another insight check on him? You may. It is a different time. Because that one failed me. Oops. I'm going to use my inspiration. Because <laughs> that one failed me worse. <laughs> oh my god. That was better. That's a 21. It's considerably better than a natural one. God. I also rolled a natural one just for hell. Shits and giggles. Nice. So, um, basically, what I'm trying to determine with my insight is if his. But what felt off about him was the, like, him trying to gauge what we were doing here and the insult to his work um, that we absolutely did, you know, like, pay him with all of our behavior towards him. <laughs> uh, roll me one more die, d20. Okay. And just tell me the number on it. That's a d12. That's different than a d20. That's you can roll the d12, it's fine. <laughs> uh, that is a 14 on die. Okay. Um, it is very clear that a significant portion of his uh, injury here that he speaks of comes from the insult paid him by not being allowed to do his job, not being trusted to do his job, and not being able to <laughs> help you do the job that he thinks you collectively should have helped doing. Yeah. But there is something else there. Something that he is trying to draw attention away from with the words he's using. Mm-hmm. Do I... Does Laramendis get a sense for what that might be? No. You just know okay. that he has really gone on the offensive in a way that is strange, given the little you know of the strict hierarchy of military and where mm -hmm. he falls on it against you. Mm-hmm. enough out of that realm, like, enough beyond what seems reasonable, that you feel like something's going on here, but you don't know him well enough to know what. Yeah. Uh, I'll... I convey this vibe. Does anyone have a better idea? Then what? A, a, a better idea than Laramendis about where, like, what he's trying to deflect from. What he's trying to distract from. Okay, if I recall, he was articulating uh, feeling insulted by this whole thing that he feels like he isn't trusted. Yes. 
And the previous behavior towards him. Yes. When was the previous behavior? Was that last session? No, it wasn't last session. I believe that it was the previous day. Let me check me. Let's see if we have a... Probably here. Yes. No. One moment. It's just I know I missed a session or two, so I don't know because I remember here. meeting him before, but I don't know. I don't remember any details about All right. any conversations we had. So if if my interpretation here is right, it would have been two days ago. But he's referring specifically to when, uh, shortly after uh, Tatsuya had been killed, when you guys started going through his stuff. And you might remember the um, little frog with the parasol with the message inside it. His stuff being Tatsuya's stuff. His stuff being Tatsuya's stuff, yes. But he had been in here. Remember, you were all down at dinner. Um, you were eating, you know, after having that horrible fight against the devil and he said I'm going to go and arrange things so that the transfer of knowledge from Tatsuya to you can be done right and then after a few minutes you went wait we don't want we don't know if any if there's any problems up there we don't want might not want him to have whatever information Tatsuya had we need to get control of that and you went up there and kicked him out of the room did we all go up or... I know that so, Yuki did. <laughs> and we, 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 we tried to be very polite about it. We weren't like, get the fuck out. <laughs> we, were like, we did not oh, use those the... specific words. It's true. <laughs> we, were, we were like, well, we need to double check some stuff, yada, yada, yada. We, we, it's better if we just didn't, like Tristan reiterated earlier, that instead of him looking all over and we got to go through it anyways... I would just, or we'd go through, or I'd go through it and then convey anything he needs to know. The long-winded way of saying you didn't trust your secretary to <laughs> collate the information for you for, like, an intelligence report? Well, it, it, well, there was, yeah, there was more I should have tried to convey that while well, we didn't say it, it's like, we don't trust the information you're going to be looking at. <laughs> He doesn't know what might be sentimental to Riken. Yeah, how's he gonna know what to do with that frog with a parasol? Exactly. In a sundress. Very special <laughs> It would have been completely missed and Riken would have never known. Sure. Uh, but so... Yeah, that that was the first of the like insults to him, uh, and the the second one that he had called out was his um, the way that Leah treated him last night, which was very um, cautiously. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a better way to say it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I wasn't here for the last session, so I don't know anything about that. I, I thought that did that happen last session? I yeah, I don't think we played. Did, did we play one without Jebel? I didn't think we did. We, we, we did, did play one without Jebel. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, I believe it was the one with the devil. I was here for the deal. You were here for the deal? I was the one who suggested that we retain the knowledge that we gave up our memories. Okay. Well, so, that must have been the session after that, then? Session after that. Was yeah, so I think, I think it was the evening. That was, yeah. It was just, uh, just last session, which was, uh, I had called that one Sleepless and Storm Reef, because that one focused largely on, um the fact that you had spent pretty much all day uh, dealing with the uh, 
your friends, um, the, you know, between getting Brunor and the devil, and now it was, uh, and talking and setting up spells and doing all that. Um, so it was nighttime, and so it was just getting things done for the night and then going to bed and then getting up the next morning was pretty much all the last session. <laughs> yeah, and um, I believe it was one of the last things we played, actually, last session. Yeah. And then, and then Leah told Larry Mendes and and then he got up the next the day and then uh, yeah. then the the devil showed up and we ended the session. Yeah. So yeah, I would say that the big important scene last session was probably um, Leah talking with Coffers and then talking with Larry Mendes. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of talking with coffers recently. <laughs> You're talking with him double right now. <laughs> <laughs> poor well, guy. Oh, my coffers is... Hello. <laughs> coffers and fuckers. So how long do I have to stay out here? <laughs> Until we're done. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... Those were the the insults that he's mm. bringing up, um, and Laramendis is looking for assistance uh, on the the vibes that offers is um, deflecting from something. All the puzzle pieces have been there in what he said to you. So, why doesn't everybody in the party give me a intelligence roll? D20 plus intelligence, and we'll see if Even you can... Oh, no. Everyone, anyone who's on the bond, everybody, and put it in chat, and we'll average it out and see if you can come up with uh, what's going on here. Uh, just I, I... Uh, <laughs> what were you going to say before the roll was bad? <laughs> yeah, like it was screwed from the beginning. Kristen, you you said just intelligence. Yeah, d twenty plus intelligence. Okay. Just put the the total in chat. I'll tally them up. Uh, but it did sound poor like Jebel. Jebel wanted no. to say something before he rolled poor. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say that Jebel uh, is will turn to coffers as a um, you'll have to forgive Leah. Um, <clears throat> she's a bit paranoid because of reasons. Uh, but you must understand that any any suspicions she felt needed to be investigated. He, you know, he looks at you making you know, holding meaningful eye contact, and he looks at Leah. Um, he's he he's pretty stony, but do you do you nod or or give Jebel a look at at any of this accusation oh that God. you're paranoid? My second one of the night. How is Riken leading the intelligence roll? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Leah. Yeah. Oh my. Oh, yeah, I, got, I, I got the five. Right, no, no, no. But Jebel has just told Coffers that you're paranoid, which is why yeah, you're I'm suspicious. Not of, you're not going to. <laughs> so Coffers is now looking at you, kind of trying to see if you agree with what he just said. So you're you're well, going I to. I thought it was invisible. I guess it wasn't. Uh, uh, Luminous was going to cast invisibility on you when you came into the room, but okay, this okay. is now no longer relevant, and also you haven't come into the... Or it's not been stated that you've come into the room. It hasn't happened uh, yet. She, no. She's, she's going to play along and just look away and, like, hug her hand and, like, okay. do the whole, like, <laughs> shy uh, uh, toe towards the floor yeah. thing. So you, you <laughs> convey that you don't like what he said, but it, you don't feel that it's wrong. And, uh, you know, he's, he's still, you know, he's wearing a pretty stony expression as he's watching this, this response. Um, and, and he, and he, and he watches you for a while. Like, it, you, you kind of 
feel very um, observed after you put on this little performance and he still seems to be staring at you before he finally like blows out a sigh and says she's concentrating very hard not to shift uh, season season <laughs> uh, and she's uh, she's in winter right now gotcha yeah god it's so helpful uh, having that pile of snowballs I got logged out I forgot my password it's taking a second can you just real quick pull up my character sheet please yeah boop, boop, boop. I don't think no matter what you roll, it's going to help us. <laughs> the party has really uh, come together <laughs> to uh, to uh, participate in this role. Do we get one inspiration oh per session? Yes, everybody yes. starts every session with one inspiration. Uh, I mean, okay, then That's I'm what I was going to say. Like, whoever has it, use an inspiration, use it. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a good idea. Oh, that's I'm so much better. Something. All right, Yuki. Like it should not be the top. <laughs> Yuki, your intelligence is plus zero. All right, so okay, I'll type that in. <laughs> Vendar rolled worse. <laughs> Isn't Vendar lucky? I don't think Vendar has lucky. He has um reliable talent, but this wasn't a skill. He does have lucky. Oh. He does have lucky? Oh. Well, yeah, yeah, if you roll a one, then you get to roll again. Oh. I actually uh, rolled good. I wish I had a plus. <laughs> <laughs> or is or it halfling luck, luck and lucky is just That's a one? Lucky, 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 lucky is you get three rerolls. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, something I was trying to say is just my thoughts kind of for Cyrus rolls. I'm fairly certain that uh, Coffers is aware that Tatsuna has not just been transferred. There was a lot of emphasis put on his, like, departure, whatever the exact phrase was. Yeah, so that's my... That's my assumption, but Lerminus didn't want to broach that without being more confident of it, because if that's wrong, <laughs> it's not a good card to play. God yeah, that's, that's what we want to do, but that is my guess at the moment. <laughs> Nat 20 for Vendar! <laughs> Thank God. Yeah, my reroll went from a 3 to an 18, so... Ha <laughs> ha! <Laramendus, laughs> shall be the worst! <laughs> that's impressive! It's <That's> okay. <laughs> okay, as long as the whole group isn't worse than Raikid. Yuki hit a 16 with a plus zero. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I believe I rolled a fucking one on the check. He rolled one time, I guess. Yeah, I was feeble-minded. My dice is used up all its shitty rolls on my previous stuff I've been using it with. Alright. A moment. What's the term for when your brain just stops working for... Uh, I usually say brain fart. No, it's not... There's, a, there's like a technical term. Brain fog? <laughs> no, no. It's, coma. It's, no, you go into like... Uh, coma! No. <laughs> I have to look up now exactly what a fugue state is. That's the term I was looking for. A fugue okay. state just means that you're, like, insensate. You, you, like, you don't have any memory of the stuff you're doing. Your body's acting, and you don't form memories of anything that's happening. You're just uh, yeah. doing stuff. People will blame fugue states on committing crimes. Like, I, I did all this stuff when I was in a fugue state. I didn't know where I was, what was going on. All of a sudden, I had killed a person. Yeah. I had this weird <laughs> thing happen to me when I was... I was about 16. And for, like, five minutes, my brain just wouldn't think. It's a real, like, fog, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I, it, it was, like, a half one in the afternoon, but I thought it was six o'clock in the evening. Yeah. And... I've just, my, I just was not able to 
process information. It was really weird. The Larry Mendes has had something like that. Just for a moment, he's just... <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> Wait, what's happening? <laughs> Fuck. I, I, sorry, I'm not braining right now. Uh, um, so, my guy has decided to take extreme pity on you. <laughs> and um, with your uh, amazing average of 14, uh, the guy has decided... That that is enough to put together, um, from what he's saying, from how he's saying it, um, and what topics he's going about and away from what that he seems to be, uh, purposely filling information and demanding information, yet in a cadence that prevents you from asking or noticing that he hasn't answered what he was looking for. What information he has. He only told you that he was trying to find out what Tatsuya's sources of income were so that he could keep um, funding the army, but the veracity of that claim has been called into question by subsequent insight rolls. That's what you get with your 14. <clears throat> what will you do with it? You feel you know what he doesn't know. You know what he's been trying to get from you. But you now know that that was a mislead, so you know you don't know what he does know. And you feel that he doesn't want you to know what he does know. Um, did we answer him about where the money was coming from? No. Do we know where the money was coming from? I uh, do you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know better than me if you know where the money is coming from. Who's funding the army? You stole... 1,500 gold pieces from Tatsuya when you got hold of his bag of holding, which contained 1,500 gold pieces. This just happened to be exactly the amount of money that Coffers then told you would be needed to maintain the army here for another month, fed and housed. So you passed it off to him. But if he needed more after that, where was it going to come from? That was a setup. That's what tipped him off. He was a confidant. He would have had something in place. And we gave him the exact coinage. Possibly with, like, the right nationalities to come from, even. That's where we fucked up. I can neither confirm nor deny. Dang it. No, I mean, we don't know where... So we don't know where Tatsuya was actually getting money from, in the first place. doesn't matter where he got it from. That's where we got it from. He knows no, it. No, no. My question is, we don't know that. Which thing are you saying we don't know? I'm questioning, did we actually find out where Tatsuya was getting the money to fund all of this? Do we actually know that? I can't remember if we actually found out that particular piece of information. No, and to, to Derek's point, or to Cyrus's point, it's irrelevant. What's, what matters is that he knows that we have acquired it via Tatsuya. Does, does Cyrus... Um, uh relay this in character over the yes, bond that, the that was the all year. that was all in character all right well then Jabba would respond that no, I don't see how that matters I mean we got it from Tatsuya we can just say we got it from Tatsuya you know a bit, a bit um a bit light on details but not entirely untrue seems 
unlikely it would give us every last cent cat. Unless it was, unless we point out that it was left for this purpose. I will remind Jebel and the party that according to the story that the party has given the army, which includes coffers, the party never directly met with or spoke with Tatsuya regarding the transfer of power. He was called away, poof, into a portal, gone, and then some 15 minutes later, you all showed up saying that you had a mandate from Bahamut to take his place, and he was off on another of Bahamut's missions. Ne'er the tween shall meet. Yeah, but not necessarily... We didn't necessarily get told directly about Bahamut. We could have been told by some sort of intermediary who could have said, like, oh, by the way, he's that piece of money. I mean, I think, so... If we say that now... Basically, there's the, you know, basically, like, why why was that not part of our story? The story has changed in a in enough of a way that it's like, oh, okay, you're absolutely lying to me. Yeah, he's kind of got us on the, with the gonads there. What does an 8th level modified memory do? <laughs> <laughs> That's a dangerous question! Are you about to be a bastard? <laughs> I'm just... I'm just looking at things. 8th is up to a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you just spend your 8th level spell? Don't you only have one? I do. I also don't have the modify memory spell. Oh I do, God. however, have a wish. <laughs> wow. Which is why I said 8th level. Yep. That is an appropriate name for the episode. What is? Got with the gonads. I should be got by the gonads. <laughs> I just went with he, you corrected a couple times and ended up with got with the gonads. I'm like, perfect. Nailed it. It was great. It was very funny. Great. Would it change the thing? <laughs> I thought last time was great. Why wouldn't you just think? <gasps> what you gonna do? What you gonna do you by the sky? About mm -hmm. the sky. He's blue. Has he specifically asked us anything now, or is this still like all of this is uh, pretty uh, pretty mental at the moment? Because it was about the it started off trying to understand, see if you could parcel out what he was trying to hide, and then discussing what the meaning of that was once you believed you had it. Okay, so question yes. in character in the bond what what if we tell him everything like what if we tell him about Tatsuya and see how he responds and if it's bad I put him in prison I do all the bad I'm just just now imagining in the storeroom with the loose wine, the <laughs> Dodsius crystal and the crystal offers. <laughs> 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 yes, 
of terrible people. What else is... I... I think that we... It might benefit us to explain the whole situation. L losing uh, somebody with his skill set uh, at this point would be difficult. Yeah, we have a spare coffers you could test this on. <laughs> Did someone say my name in there? <laughs> you want to see how uh, illusory coffers would react to being read in? Probably not now, because this one's here, but going forward... Uh, it's probably a good way to. Uh, well, that was the intent. <laughs> that was the intent with casting the spell. Now, it just didn't work the way that we wanted it to. Mm. Because Tristan hates me. He hates my spell. He wants me to suffer. Suffer, Sam. What do I hate about your spell? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> I'm, look, I think I've been very, very accommodating <laughs> about this fucker of a spell. No, hate. <laughs> um. I just love that you're sitting there waiting for him to come in, and meanwhile he's been tipped off that you're in here doing shenanigans and he walks in and you think he's the illusion like that could have been scripted better yeah i know it was great <laughs> <laughs> and then the one from your spell walks in <laughs> yep but, you know, i loved that that was good <laughs> i'm just glad i thought to ask about which was which <laughs> <laughs> so good. Fuck me. That's what happened. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that explains why when the second one walked in, it was like, What are you doing here at this time? And I was like, It's the middle of the day. What are you talking about? <laughs> and why, when the first one walked in, he looked around at the whole room surprised before yeah. looking at you? Because the time of day changed. Yeah, I was just like, I was like, that was a very weird thing to say. It was, what's going? <laughs> okay, okay, I get it now. Oh. That was stupid. So, do we read so, him in and see how he responds? Uh, do you want to take it slowly? Uh, how do you mean? Like, not just drop it straight on him. I'm unsure of the, the tack exactly that you want to go. Let's ease him in gently. So I, I'll just turn out to say... I can't remember what his actual name is. Rialan Thess. Thess. Rialan. Uh, they both look over at you because you can see both of them. They say, like, yes. And I point, no, this one. <laughs> he points at himself, me? <clears throat> or me? Uh, the 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 real the, one. The real one. Okay. <laughs> they oh, each the point themselves one. and say me. <laughs> <laughs> me? <laughs> so me? <laughs> no, that wasn't. Oh, that outer character. The real one is the one I'm po the yeah. points. Yeah. All right. So the one who's still in the room with you. Yes. Okay. Uh. It, um. 
everyone who has joined this army has done so for a reason. Uh, have we inquire, inquired as to what your experience was? He kind of it seems a little taken aback at that question. He, he looks down as though he's, he's thinking to himself and he goes, Um, no. Uh, no, I actually don't think really anyone save for Maybe Ruby has asked my reasons for being here. Do you... Quite a few people uh, seem to have... They seem to be reacting to some sort of loss. Personal loss. Uh, I don't know if I've... I'm not sure if I've met anyone who's here outside of that. For, for They recognize the danger these dragons pose to other people and not just as as something that has hurt them. I don't know. What's your experience? My experience? The driving motivation for my being here? Well, I... I don't know if you think it's simple or... Worthy. I came with Thandros when we were made to abandon him on the fields outside of Everwatch. Most of his squad believed him dead. If not then, then sometime very soon, as the Bromdorans would not let such a potent enemy of their plans of dominating Aspara live. When the others decided that they would exact the vengeance of their grief on Thandro's father, Believing his greed and his distance to be causes of the situation, family situation, the circumstance that Thandros in that position. He puts up a hand, you know, stalling himself, saying, enough. <laughs> that seemed not the way to me, and I recalled as we left the field that day, driven off by the soldiers of Brondor, that a great light appeared, and it seemed as though there were some ones flying over the heads of the army. I wanted to look deeper into that, and with the connections I had through the Drachnirs, when I wasn't serving in Thandro's squad, I helped his father with his books. I can't say I'm entirely proud of that, but it meant I got to live well. In any event, the connections I had through Thandro's family I learned that there was a follower of Bahamut who was traveling, perhaps magically, from nation to nation, capital to capital, battlefield to battlefield, as it turned out, recruiting soldiers for this war effort. And by this time, the Green Dragon was known. Bromdor had ceased its attack on Aspara so that it could deal with that. 
The idea that there could be more dragons didn't seem so far-fetched. And so... I thought... If I find them, if I join that effort, I can do something good. Something I can feel better about than working for Drachnir. And perhaps I could do what those fools wanted, but made the wrong choice, and be reunited with Thandros. I'm here, because he is here, and we both believe in this cause. I believe in him, and he believes that we can stop the dragons, so I believe that we can stop the dragons. What do you believe? Much the same. Good. I worry. I worry about the circumstance of your arrival, the words, emotions that were exchanged prior to you taking control of the army from former General Tatsuya, from Thandros. He seems to believe in you, and so I want to, but... I cannot get the image of that man in his silvered armor falling through a portal and crying, Tiamat. And then um, you're... Out of character. Out of character. Did we uh, confide with Thandros exactly what happened? No. Does he know? Uh, no, we very pointedly did not tell him so that he wouldn't have to lie. Ah, right. We had that discussion if we should tell if we should, you know, like make sure that he's aware and we decided that it would be better for him to Yeah, I not thought know. we did that, but I couldn't quite remember. Um And so your convenient arrival thereafter, well explained by assignment from Bahamut, should General Yukikaze be precisely who he says he is, backed up by the Golden Scale herself, Saltharis. It's all the evidence one should need, right? All the evidence one could want that one's claims are exactly as they say. True. But I have spent years moving numbers around to make them look true. Is Vendor trying to say something, or is the mic being bumped? Is it working? We, uh, we, now we hear you. crackling, now we hear you. No. And now no, we don't no, hear you. No, nothing. A new mic is on its way over there, it should get there the 25th. What if that's actually his voice? <laughs> <laughs> Vendor's just over there crackling. I'm just thinking in, in the movie Robots, the the like the subway announcer talking into the into the box and they pull the box away and he continues talking in that way. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> His actual voice. Okay, I think we've lost you entirely, Vendor. I'm sorry. Uh, I wasn't trying to say it. Okay. I usually stop talking while it's crackling so that I can make those cuts more easily and not have to leave them in. <laughs> um... I have lost okay, my train so... of thought because that noise destroys my brain. Jebel, Jebel had just asked if uh, yeah, we, we, Thandros we is aware Thandros of the full situation. Know. Right, Thandros uh, doesn't know. So, over the bond, Jebel, so are we going to came in on everything? I think that if we are 
untruthful about the situation around Tatsuya's disappearance, then uh, things will be made more difficult for us. He's a smart man who's determined to figure out why the numbers are not lining up the way that they should be. All right, so... Do you want me to go ahead? Uh, does anyone else disagree with Laramendis? Nope. I think everyone should weigh in on this. <laughs> this yeah. is a big move. If we're going to do this, uh, please have that modified memory ready. So that we can undo this. He doesn't have it. Well, I mean, I think he's saying be, be prepared to cast a wish. <laughs> I, wish I, I'm prepared. But I don't see a way out at the moment. So. I mean, I I was I was the first one suggesting we tell him everything. So I mean, yeah. uh, Vendar. Okay, I think we should. I think we should tell. Him. So. Is it work? I think. Yeah, yeah, I heard. I, I think heard, we should I tell him. <laughs> yeah, that, that's yeah. Like the thing you said after that, I didn't catch. Be ready to use the spell. Okay. Have character. Okay. It's difficult to cast off by memory on an elf because it's a charm effect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay. We're going ahead with this. Every goddamn die I've rolled for him tonight has been like an eight or lower. <laughs> Okay, so please um, explain to me what it is you tell him. We'll play it okay. if, you, if you would. Okay, okay. So, we haven't been entirely honest for good reason. He's the going to raise eyebrows at that. The morale of the army for one, and... Uh, well, so, it's complicated. Tatsia wanted to defeat the dragons, with his express purpose being to destroy Tiamat, which is a pretty big thing. Yes, but it is what the army has been training for, and there are many stout-hearted soldiers here ready to make the ultimate sacrifice and see that through. Yeah. Oh. Here. I don't know, and I, I turn to Laramidus and I was like, I don't really follow the logic behind his decision here, but in order to destroy Tiamat, he made a pact with Tiamat? Well, which is... You remember his first goal he said jumbled. Uh, real quick, I'll say quickly on the telepathic bond that he he wanted to create strife in the world to unite the world. Oh, I know that, but he... Okay. I, I recall that. But I, 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 I want to just get like the important bits out there. It's like, yeah, he, he made a pact with Tiamat, which is why when... He was summoned. He thought that it was Tiamat summoning him. He knits his brow at that and says, I mean, that seems less likely. He's trying to destroy her. It, one could use a deception in a pact, perhaps, but that just did not seem his style. Jealous, I just shrugs. I don't know that this is what he did. Go on then. What happened next? Well, we got into a fight. You got into a fight. So, that portal he fell through, crying the name Tiamat as he did. Was yours. 
Yes. He nods very slowly. There's something going on behind those eyes, but he doesn't say anything. He seems to be mulling this and says, You got into a fight. And you killed him. Uh, I... Okay, that, that's open to interpretation. <laughs> I mean, he's technically still around. Like, the plan was not really to kill him, it was to inca incapacitate him in some manner. Wait, that was but before... Then... That was before he turned into a demon, or whatever. Yeah. But, as you recall, packed with uh, Tiamat gave him powers. So, when he turned into, like, some sort of massive demon devil thing, uh, uh you know, that plan yeah. went out the window. He became a devil. Mm-hmm. You didn't want him to kill Tiamat, so you portaled him and then defeated him in combat, at which point he was turned into a devil due to an agreement he had with Tiamat. Despite that his stated goal, and everything he's worked for for the last three months, has been to destroy Tiamat. Yeah. Okay. I, I think someone else should chime in and help Jebel out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like, I don't really understand his reasoning yeah. any better than you do. What? One? I always thought he was an idiot. <clears throat> I was... was wanting to clarify are that he was the one releasing the dragons to have to kill them in the first place. And he wants to kill them to summon Tiamat to then kill Tiamat. So, while the end result might have been beneficial, a continent being wiped off the map would likely be the minimum casualty. Yeah. Uh, 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 were you aware that he was... Are you aware that Tatsia was the one raising the dragons? Well, that's preposterous. He was putting the dragons down, or we were preparing to put the dragons down, and the convenience there would, is that doing so would be what pulls Tiamat from Avernus so that she can be properly slain. Yeah, but the dragons were dormant. Like, they were... It, it, it had some sort of special rite that was done that See. sealed them away. Tatsia was unsealing them so he could kill them because sealing them and killing them are two different things within the magic and sealing them does not summon Tiamat from Avernus no, no. sealing them basically just puts them to sleep killing all of them killing all of them within a certain Was time it? of each other an hour or two it, I think it's two hours two hours uh, that's what summons Tiamat. Well, that makes quite a bit of sense to me, Lieutenant General. When I was a gambling man, anyone who deals with Lord Drachnir is a gambling man. You often saw how creating certain situations, which under normal circumstances would be bad, caused other things to happen, which you could turn to benefit you. We used to call this spinning. You spin the situation until it benefits you. So, as a former gambling man, Lieutenant General Jebel, I believe that if my faith in former General Tatsuya was not, in fact, misplaced, I understand that you wish to tell me that it was, but if I assume that it wasn't, I can see how he was spinning the situation 
to take down Tiamat. Create a little bad to do a lot of good. Now, the assumption there is that I can trust that that was what he planned to do, and that he had everything well in hand. If the reality is that it was not, or he did not, well, that's another matter, and one that I will have to make right with my gods. So, if we assume that I have been wrong, then I want to know... Your plan is simply to return these dragons to the state from which Tatsuya raised them and maintain the status quo with Tiamat. Yes, mostly because we have no idea what happens if you kill a god. Or, mm. or, or, even if, or whatever. <clears throat> That's well, we we also do know, in a sense, that the void usually gets filled. It's not left open, so you're only trading to what we feel is you're only trading one evil for another, if you want to convey that to him. Who's speaking there? Yuki. Oh. Not over the bond. Over the, over the bond? I'm telling you, over the bond, that you can say this to him. That, like, with uh, what was it? Was it with the Raven Queen? No, not Raven Queen, no. The, the Raven place of May roll. Wait, what? what was that, Derek? I said the Raven place of May roll, previous God of Death. Yeah. Yes. So, as an example, you could give that too if you want to say that to him. Though it might, for example, as an evil god did get replaced with one. That cut off, but Derek's at neutral. An evil god got replaced by a neutral god. Hmm. I know, but anywho, even if we did manage to kill Tiamat, which is a big if, that's... Who's, who's going to take her place? Somewhere I don't suppose it would be one of you. Or it would have been Tatsuya. Would it have been? Could it have been? Should it have been? Should it have been? Is the status quo fully worth maintaining, then? Leave... Tiamat to continue influencing the material plane from her safety in Avernus? Versus her destruction, potential replacement with someone else, something else? Perhaps you, perhaps Tatsuya? What if I were to replace her? Would I become evil? So now you're bringing that level of uncertainty into it, which is... Can us, can us, like, in here, you guys are still reciting this, is that even possible for us to become a god? Uh, it's an open question. One that I don't intend to find the answer to. Uh, is it, is it Vecna? Vecna? Was he Vecna was just a lift. Give me a second here. Um... Jacob, are you trying to speak, or is the mic just making horrible noises on its own? He's typing. Okay. Typing. Um, good. uh, <laughs> maybe Coffers is, was goal is to become the god. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Uh, I, I believe my religion is high enough to confirm Vendor's statement there. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That is correct. Okay, you yeah. would know that's true. I'm looking at his first question, which I'm oh. going to respond to uh, and say because Jebel 
told him that it was Tatsuya waking up the dragons, unless you're asking. Yeah. Oh, um, that, how does that, Jebel know that was that? written, I think, before Jebel said that, or like a, that was written around the time that. Oh, yeah, okay. We were talking about that. Time. Okay. So Vecna did go from mortal to god. Yes. Wow, it's 11 o'clock already. What? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah 9.30 went by and I, for me, and I'm just like, uh... Well... I thought the clock was off by now. No, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, poke me when that happens. I, I, This was such an interesting discussion. I didn't want to stop. I didn't notice the clock at all. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm I sorry. Thought, I thought I'd been waiting for a right moment. <laughs> Well, you, know, you can always send it to me in text, and hopefully I'll see it. But at least that way it's there for me to maybe notice. It, I only, I only say maybe because I, I don't get pings when I'm streaming. I always want to notice this because when they said, uh, Vendar said that earlier, I looked at the timestamp, and I'm like, wait a minute. I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even look at the timestamp and put it together. 56 was earlier? <laughs> okay. I am so sorry, um, but thank you for providing me this amazing scene that we're going to have to pick up on uh, next time we play. Uh, Two weeks ago. I did know the time. I just kept going. Two weeks of suspense. Yeah. <laughs> Jeb was like, I oh, know, I need to get to the bottom of this. I gots to know. So, like, like time, to... time hit when we were like making the rolls to try and figure out or like very shortly after yeah, uh, the the rolls for the intelligence rolls were at ten twenty. Our time. Mm -hmm. Uh Tristan. So uh like that was that was what was going on at like time. Oh my gosh. The rolls were happening. Yeah, the intelligence rolls. <gasps> Alright, this is my fault. I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to everybody. Um we'll pick it up um when we can get together again. Um, we'll see when that is. I'm pretty sure I've next, week, next week is Easter and Lermondus is away. Yeah. Uh, and I am. I'll be in Arizona still. Yeah. Okay. okay, so two people will be gone. Yeah, we won't be able to continue then. So, we'll figure it out. We'll be in communication between... It works out that way. It does, right? Yeah, but right. You're always off when I have an actual day off on the Wednesday. Ugh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear about that. But thank you all for being here. Uh, thank you for helping to make this a, a very interesting session. And the next time we are together, there's going to be hopefully no more crackling. That. Thank you. Perfect timing on that crackle. <laughs> Alright. I will see you all when I see you. Have a good night, everybody. Have a great week. Bye, stream! Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.